Hi lovelies, I hope you're all well. So once again we are doing a Cricut Christmas Craft Along Inspiration video. They have released this week's theme and it is Christmas wreaths. So we're going to do two wreaths today. We're going to start with the first one. So I've got a wooden wreath which I've got from Hobbycraft. And we're going to make some felt and some faux suede uh, poinsettias. And we're also going to cut out my surname letter, which is an S in chipboard. And we're going to use some gilding flakes with that. So I've got my poinsettia here. So I just went to images and I searched for poinsettia. And it came up with this one, which is a card one. So that's the one that I've chosen. So this is all grouped together and I've made it six inches in width. I actually want seven poinsettias, but I'm going to have three the same, then three different the same, and then two different the same. So I actually want to duplicate this just three times to begin with. And I'm going to come in, first of all, I want to change the colours of this one. So my yellow middles are all going to be the same. They're all going to be yellow felt. So I don't need to change the colour of those because they can all cut out on the same mat. My leaves I want to change the colour of. So I'm just going to change it slightly to a green. And then I'm going to do the same for those ones. And then the red I want to change as well. Let's just make these ones rose pink. Then I want to work with this one. So again, my middle, I'm going to keep the same. They can all cut out on the same mat. I want to change my leaves to a different color. So let's just choose a sage. And then for my red, I'm actually going to cut this one out in like a, a faux suede. So let's just change the red slightly to there. And then we can change that one and we can change that one. So this one I'm going to have duplicated twice. This one I'm going to have duplicated three times. And this one I'm going to have duplicated three times as well. And in fact that doesn't even make sense because we've gone one too many. So we'll have that as a three and these two as a two. So we can then go to make it. And you can see we've got our different mats there because they're color coordinated. So we can go to continue. I'm going to use my maker today. And apart from uh, this one here, everything is going to be in felt. That one's just going to be in faux suede. So we're just going to come down to felt. And you can see I've got a choice to load my fine point blade or if I go to edit tools, I can use my rotary blade. Because I am using my maker today, I am going to use the rotary blade. I personally find it cuts felt better. But the fine point blade does work just as well if you're using the Cricut felt, which I am, on your Air or your Air 2. I'm using Cricut felt today and the Cricut faux suede. For my faux suede, I'm going to go down to fabric and we can then choose faux suede. And you'll see that it's telling us to load our rotary blade, which I'm going to do. If, however, you have the Air or the Air 2, you see if you come down to leather, you've also got faux suede, which is the official Cricut faux suede. If we click on that, it will then tell us to load the fine point blade. It's just that I want to work with my rotary blade today because I really do love the way it cuts. But you can cut both the Cricut Felt and the Cricut Faux Suede using your Air or your Air 2 on the fine point blade. <laughs>
So we've cut out all our pieces, so I've got my felt pieces. I also use some faux suede as well, uh, just to add a different texture and colour in there. Again, I used my rotary blade, so I've used my rotary blade for all of this. We've got a few different colours, so we're now going to construct our poncietas. So I'm using my Bosch glue pen today. And these are pretty self-explanatory in putting together. So we're going to get our biggest piece first in green and we're just going to add some hot glue onto that. And then glue our next leaf piece. Again we're going to add some hot glue in the centre. And then just add the next piece so this will give us our base. We're going to add a little bit more hot glue in the centre and then add our first red piece and you literally just keep building it up. It's a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle but I mean you can have your pieces wherever you want them, it's completely up to you how you want it to look. If you end up with spider's webs, as I like to call them, just let it cool down a bit and then you can pull them away. I just find working with felt and faux suede that hot glue for me personally is the best thing to work with. Um, I know people will disagree with that, there's other things that people like to use. I just get on really well with the hot glue when it comes to these materials. And then finally we can add our pollen centre. And then that's our poncietta all kind of constructed. So we've come back in so I can sort out my chipboard letter. So I've got the letter S here, which is Christmas in Finland font. I don't need to do anything to it. I've just sized it up in a height of nine inches because that's the size I want. We're then going to go to make it. Of course, when working with the knife blade and we're working with chipboard, the maximum area you can have is 11 by 11 inches. So we can go to continue. I'm going to browse all materials and I'm going to choose heavy chipboard at 2mm. If you don't have uh, the maker and you want to do this with the Air or the Air 2, you could use some heavy cardstock if you wanted. You could use anything you wanted to do your initial. It's just that I want to use the chipboard today. So I've got my chipboard letter here to go on my wreath and I've also got some Nuvo gilding flakes and I've got the Nuvo glue pen as well. And I'm gonna decorate my chipboard using these. So the Nuvo glue pens are actually blue tipped and you'll see when I put the glue onto here, it's a kind of milky colour. Now if you were going to use this with glitter um, or any kind of other medium, so you're going to use this to stick card to each other, you would stick them immediately on. However, with the gilding flakes, we're going to wait for it to go from that milky colour to a transparent colour. So it's not completely dry, but it's still tacky. So we're just going to come in and we're just going to draw our glue pen all the way 
to the bottom of the curve and I'm just going to do this in sections because I find it easier to do it that way and it's gone on with a kind of milky consistency and we're just going to leave it for about a minute just so it can go transparent. So once the milky residue is gone and we're left with just a transparent, you can see it's still sticky but it's not wet. So we're going to get our gilding flakes and you can be generous because we can put them back in the pot and we're just going to start placing them down onto our glued bits and I'm going to use both the gold and the rose gold today and we're just going to come in and just stick them down randomly and it does get messy it's a it is a messy process but it's quite fun and it's a great thing to do with the children as well because children love doing things like this and as long as you've got paper down just as you would with glitter you can catch the excess and you can reuse it I've got a little pot that I've got full of mixed bits so if I'm doing a mixture like I am with this one I'll put it all in a separate pot but a lot of the time I use either gold or rose gold so they can go straight back in the pots in which they come from. Now ideally you want to use a fluffy brush anything that's kind of soft and a bit fluffy you can use but you can also use your finger and I'm just going to use my finger today so I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to start just gently rubbing and we're just going to give it a nice gentle rub and I'm just going to rub the sides and the corners so that we can get the excess bits broken and then we're just going to come in and give it a tap and again we're just going to come down the sides and if we've got any bits that are hanging on we can just use our finger to dislodge those and we've then got a really beautifully decorated piece of chipboard and as I say with the excess you can either put it back in its original pot if you're just using one colour or if you're using multicolour I've got a multicolour pot that I use so I'm just going to continue to add my glue pen onto here in sections and add my gilding flakes in We can then come in and hot glue this to our reef. Now we've got our chipboard uh, letter on there, we can now come in and add the rest of our poinsettias in. Uh, and I just wanted to leave them till last just so I knew where I would want to place them really. Design space and we are going to create our second reef. 
This time we're going to create it from scratch. We're not going to use a reef that we've bought as a base. We're actually going to make our reef. We're going to use chipboard today. So I am going to be using my maker and my knife blade. However, it is going to be an indoor reef. So if you wanted to use craft board, you could. I mean, you can use any material that you want to use. But if you've got an air or an air two, you're certainly not excluded from creating something like this. You'll You'll just have to change the material slightly. So you can see I've got some circles in front of me. I've got one at 9.262 inches and then I've got a smaller one at 7.62 inches and then I've got two small ones at one inch and then 0.7 inches. So with these two I'm just going to bring it in. I'm going to highlight both. I'm going to align and center. And I'm going to do exactly the same with these two. So highlight, align and center. I'm then going to group those two together. And I'm just going to hide this one here. I'm then going to bring these two over to this one. And I'm just going to highlight, align and center horizontally. Just to make sure it's sat on the top there. And I'm going to click on that and ungroup and I'm just going to hide that smaller circle. I'm going to highlight these two and I'm going to weld them together. I'm then going to bring back the smaller circle. I'm going to highlight and I'm going to slice. And I can then come in and delete that middle area. I can then bring back my smaller, bigger middle bauble and again I'm going to highlight and slice and that is then going to give me my bauble shape. I then want to duplicate that so I've got three duplicates and with the third duplicate I'm going to come into my contour and I'm just going to contour out that middle piece. So this is going to be chipboard, it's going to sit on the back and we are going to slice a rectangle in there in a minute because we're going to have some lights in there. We're then going to have this piece sat on top. I've then got two circles which are 8.5 inches. One is going to be vellum which is then going to sit on top here. And the other is then going to be acetate, which again is going to sit on top of our vellum. So our lights will be behind. And then finally, our other bauble is then going to sit and they're going to be encased. So with our back solid piece, I want to come in, I want to grab a square. And I'm just going to unlock it and I'm going to make it two inches in width by one inch in height. And this is so that I can actually access the battery pack of my fairy lights that I'm going to attach to the back of this. So I'm just going to align and I'm going to center horizontally so it's in the center and I'm just going to slice out that rectangle. And then that's it, it's ready to go. So we've got three pieces of chipboard to cut out and then we've got a vellum circle and a foil acetate circle as well. But as I say, you can use any materials that you want to use. So for mat two, three and four, I'm going to be using Cricut chipboard. So I'm just going to browse all materials and I can choose heavy chipboard. And of course it will tell me that I need my knife blade. For mat one, I'm going to be using foil acetate today. So I'm going to come all the way down to plastic and I can then choose foil acetate. And of course that will just need the fine point blade. And then finally for mat number five, I'm going to choose vellum. And again, that is just the fine point blade as well.
piece and then I've got one of my bauble pieces and then of course I've got the one that I've glittered and I've come in with some Nouveau embellishment mousse just to give it a kind of rugged look. You're not going to see any of this, um, but I just wanted it to be more than just the chipboard. So I just rubbed some of this in using my fingers just to give it a kind of distressed look. And I'm going to glue these two pieces on top of each other. And of course, part of this is actually going to be hidden, but we want that. We do want that. And we're still going to be able to get our battery pack through there. And I'm just going to use some Gorilla wood glue today to glue these two pieces of chipboard together. Now you're supposed to clamp these for about 20 minutes. I don't have a clamp, so I just place them under some really heavy books for about half an hour just to really start to dry. So I've got my glittered front bauble bit, I've got my gold stars foil acetate and I've got my silver vellum. I've got some art glitter glue here and I'm going to just glue my acetate to the back of my chipboard. So this is now all dried together and this is also all dried together. So I've just got some copper wire fairy lights here and I've got my hot glue gun and I'm just going to come in and glue my lights down. All we have to do is glue the two pieces together. I'm going to use Gorilla Glue again and then I'm just going to place them under some heavy books. And then once it's dried I'm just going to place my battery pack in the slot there and hot glue it in place. Mm -hmm. 